So now in this video, we're gonna look at a voltage doubler circuit. It doesn't really quite double the voltage though. We'll talk about why. Uh, but we're powering the circuit with five volts and uh, ultimately we're gonna be able to charge this capacitor up to almost 10 volts, you know, over nine volts right there because there are some losses. So let's zoom in and uh, look at why there's losses and what else is going with the switch. So this is just a partial part of the circuit that I showed you. Um, but uh, yeah, we got the capacitor there. Uh, jumper's going to ground, we have a diode there. What that means is that the capacitor is gonna charge through the diode. And um, we'll charge up to about 4.4 volts. That's the negative side, uh, that's the positive side. Um, I just kinda illustrated those um, so that you know that's the negative side and that's the positive side and uh, that comes into play when we come over here. So when we move that jumper from the negative supply now to the uh, positive supply, and of course you would use a digital switch or something. Um, you wouldn't manually keep uh, doing this. A digital switch can go on all day. There's nothing to wear out or anything, um, but uh, for demonstration purposes, the manual switch helps. So I'm just gonna move a jumper back and forth. So we go to the positive supply. Remember, we charged this up to 4.4 volts, this capacitor. Now we have the uh, power supply voltage. Uh, this would be, you know, headed to ground, whatever, a load or whatever. But in any case, uh, if we go to the positive supply, even if we just put the uh, multimeter probe right here, if there's nothing connected, we would see 9.4 volts because now the power supply and the capacitor are in series. When you consider that the uh, probe, the red probe is connected here, the black probe is connected to ground. So it will see that voltage, probably about 9.4 volts. And uh, multimeter might start uh, discharging the capacitor though, because a little current does still trickle through. So now we're gonna add some more instead of uh, just having this. Now we got a diode there and another uh, capacitor. So now current will definitely move. So we go uh, negative there, that uh, charges the capacitor up to 4.4 .4 volts. Then we go to positive, that adds uh, five volts to that 4.4 volts, but this is gonna drop, so that would be 9.4. This is gonna drop about 0.6. So these are estimates, you know. And um, so um, technically it might be a little uh, less than nine volts, because you consider that drops about 1.2 volts out of that 9.4 that we had there. Um, so in any case, maybe it's like 8.8 uh, .8 we can expect under worst case scenario will get pumped into this capacitor, but you have to pump it like a few times, or a number of times, I should say, before this capacitor gets fully charged. So that one gets fully charged, and then you push it, and it uh, pushes current into that one. Um, depends on how charged this one is, because as this voltage goes up, that one's going down until they meet. And uh, so you gotta do it repeatedly. And then if you have a load, of course, um, that's gonna be drawing uh, some current, and uh, so, you gotta do this uh, really rapidly to make up for that current that it, it is taking. And um, so especially when you got a load, it might uh, dip down versus what you measure with a uh, multimeter for a number of reasons. And you'd wanna use uh, large uh, capacitance. So, um, but uh, that's a really cool process. Um, and then yeah, shock key diodes, um, they conduct at lower uh, voltages so you won't uh, lose as much. I made this diagram a long time ago and uh, and I didn't really review it in detail before I made this video, but uh, I think uh, I covered everything there, so let's go to an actual demonstration. So now we are uh, zoomed into the circuit. I have uh, changed things a little bit. We're gonna do a little preparation. First off, these resistors, I just had them off to the side on the board. They are meant to uh, discharge the uh, capacitors because I already uh, tested this out. And um, also, first we're gonna remove the diode there. When I showed the uh, demonstration, I uh, didn't have that diode in the uh, first demonstration. And um, now we can probably remove that uh, resistor so I don't forget and then wonder why things uh, look odd uh, later on. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna get ready to uh, take our voltage measurement. There's a little bit of a process to this um, because it's hard to uh, move that jumper and hold uh, probes at the same time without messing up the uh, actually, we don't want that current. That was the last video. Um, so we'll set it to a voltage there. 
And as I said before, I don't have to move the uh, red probe for anything but uh, current above like 600 milliamps. For this particular meter, I can just leave it at uh, voltage. So we'll come back over here. Here's the uh, red probe and the black probe. And I made these a long time ago. They were actually really easy to make. I had these alligator clips and uh, I just clipped them. The other end is, is like that. I just used uh, pliers to uh, basically clamp the uh, opening of the alligator clips over there to this. I didn't use a tool or anything and uh, they worked really well for me. They don't seem to have a ton of resistance. That's the wrong alligator clip. There we go. The one to this uh, jumper. And uh, we'll uh, put that there. I think I made a video too where I made another uh, pair. But uh, any case, first we're going to look at the voltage of the capacitor. So that side is ground. That's when we uh, charge it. And uh, so uh, I think, yeah, we actually have a uh, voltage. There. Let's remove the uh, jumper. That resistor was meant to uh, discharge uh, the capacitor, but uh, that was even worse. So, never mind. There, we have that uh, out of 5 volts. It looks like the current is uh, trickling through right there. So, yeah, 5 volts at the supply. And then now it's showing uh, 5 volts out there. But that's not a strong 5 volts. Current's just kind of tricking, trickling through the uh, diode because they aren't a perfect uh, diode. Their forward voltage is not an absolute that it won't conduct anymore at that forward uh, voltage. Starts trickling through. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm going to uh, remove from the uh, negative supply and we should see uh, somewhere around like 9 volts uh, right there. There we go. So already there we got uh, almost 10 volts there. Again a little higher because we're not taking any power from it. There's a little trickling going on. Um, when things are going like really fast, it wouldn't build up like that. But that's the supply voltage, 5 volts. And there's really no current uh, flowing through. It's just kind of kind of maintaining the charge on the capacitor. But there you can see it's already uh, uh, going down, which uh, we can kind of expect. So let's recharge that to uh, 4, basically 4.4 again in that range. Let's get uh, rid of this right there. So now we can, uh, yeah, we can just come to this other capacitor right there. So yeah, it's discharged, but they have, uh, I forget what it's called. Um, their voltage kind of drifts up a little bit towards what they were at before. And uh, that's right. Diodes right there. So now we're going to bridge the, the gap there with this other diode right there. So there we go. Now you can see the voltage transferred, but uh, it's going to be a little bit lower again because of the diode. But again, since we're not really dealing with a lot of currents, at this time it's just you know basically sitting there a little bit trickling through to, to give it a little bit higher charge right there as I said before now again you saw with the uh, just this pass we were able to get it up to uh, above 9 volts but uh, it was trickling down over time now we're pumping some of the current into uh, that uh, capacitor once they basically equalize other than the voltage difference of that diode then it can't push any more current in and uh, that's where the voltage stops. So now that it has a higher voltage than it did before, hopefully you can see this. Now that it has a higher voltage than it did before, it's gonna go up even higher because we topped that off and we we're able to pump more charge into it. But again, each time you pump more charge into it and this one gets a higher voltage, then it starts accepting less and less current each time right there. Um, so each jump is not gonna be as uh, good as it was before. So I can kind of quickly bump these back and forth. I'm looking at the board so I don't uh, miss what I'm aiming at. Um, but yeah, there you can see the voltage going. It looks like we pretty much leveled off uh, right there. So again, you won't want to do like a mechanical switch flipping back and forth. Like 555 timers, um, they're actually not that perfect. I've, I've made other videos where I use them to alternate, uh, alternate uh, uh, MOSFET transistors. To uh, sync and source current because they do connect directly to the power supply and you can alternate them uh, to make uh, direct uh, connections um, just with the signal that you give with the 555 but the 555 controls them or other integrated circuits too um, so it is pretty easy to uh, make these uh, voltage doublers if you absolutely need more voltage not a ton of current you know maybe you could charge like uh, a number of series supercapacitors or something if, if absolutely need be uh, but you charge them like over time and then use them later on uh, well this kind of tries to keep them topped off um, but uh, you know 
I don't see a ton of uh, voltage doublers in circuits, but uh, definitely if you just need a simple way to get more voltage, they are uh, pretty effective. Again, as long as you don't need way too much current, hopefully that makes sense. So, in case this video went on, went on way longer than I thought it would, hopefully you still enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.